Podcast listeners, it is I, Golden J, and today I have got Josh Ortiz with me. Josh, thank you so much for joining me. Oh yeah, man! Thanks for having me. Oh man, you know, in as many years as we've known each other, this is actually the first time it is just you and me, where we don't have bands playing or uh you know a ton of shit going on where we can just um, talk you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing yeah it's like hey man how's it going i gotta I got 20 people i need to talk to high five man you guys are doing great <laughs> <laughs> so yeah man thanks for joining me thanks for doing this with me and uh i'm excited to uh kind of dive into um your life, uh, in complete life. I'm not talking about just music stuff, but also, uh, you know, your personal life and kind of that kind of stuff. But, uh, I guess, uh, let's do, give me a little introduction about yourself. Okay. Um, let's see. I've been, I'm Josh Ortiz. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing drums since I was 16 years old. Um, first, uh, first show I ever played was at Cheers in South Bend on open, <laughs> open jam night, right? Back in the day with Jimmy Coburn and them. <laughs> with the, the pirate shirt, the vest, and the, the, the boots, all of it. Yeah, he was wearing it. Uh, God rest his soul, Jimmy rest, Coburn. Love that guy. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was my first show ever. Um, Let's see. I, I I grew up in New Orleans, as we were we were talking just a second ago. Right um, down there, uh, you know, ages one through five. Then we moved away. Cause I was a Navy brat, so we moved all over the place. Uh, moved away, came back, um, you know, right up to high school, and then we ended up out here uh, when my dad finally got stationed in the Chicago area and didn't want to live in the city anymore. So got a farm out in Knox, Stark County, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, a different place for me. But uh, you know. You know, it was a really, I, I guess it kind of formulates, you know, me as a, as a musician. You know, I, I started out with a lot of jazz and a lot of blues down there. And then right. up here and, you know, it's it's all rock, 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 rock. At least when I was growing up, it was all, you know, glam rock, butt rock, and, you know, then classic rock and metal. So um, definitely wouldn't have the, the probably the, the chops or, you know, gotten into a lot of different things if I did move up here. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely different different everywhere you know what i mean but yeah right. that's me i'm a drummer i've been playing drums since i was 16 um you know not to date myself but i'm 45 so i've been doing <laughs> a long time um you know love to play love to play all styles of music just love to do it you know um and i'm also a banker by trade and you know i'm married to a, an awesome lead singer of my band and you know yeah you know me and the son run a sound company on the side so yeah, we just we just keep real busy and keep into the scene, and yeah, that's that's pretty much me. I'm just a another working guy, you know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, as as I bring you Josh, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to Josh is because he is actually one of the hardest working musicians that I have ever met. There's only <laughs> one. There's only one that I can think of in this area that. Uh, might come close, and that would be uh, a Mr. John Finken. He, I mean, he is uh, he is a hardworking dude too. That's but dude, yeah. you are uh, you are always hustling, man. You're always going doing something in the music business, and I mean, it's been like that since I've known you. And let's back up a little bit. We talked about Jimmy Coburn. Oh yeah. Uh, I was actually in a band with with Jimmy called uh, Shattered Image Shattered years. Image years ago yep. and so when you guys got started when you started playing was that um poker face ace was that or was there a, a... before that um when we first got it was actually a band with uh, i'll drop some more names in this area area guys have been playing forever uh it was actually me craig turner 
when he was 18 years old, um, Jimmy, um, uh, Joe Calcagno, and uh, Neil Neil Hagens from Knox. You know, okay. And that band was called Titanium, the purest form of metal. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Right, and uh, you know. You know, we we got we were doing mostly originals in that band, believe it or not. You know, we, uh, Craig was you know uh, going to music school and all, just came back from music school, um, and he wanted to do all this original stuff. He wanted to be a rock star. I just wanted to play. You know what I mean? I, you know, I just I right. like drums and I like to play. You know, and I was still pretty pretty novice. I really had only taken up drums at about fourteen years old, uh, thirteen or fourteen, uh, playing a marching band and stuff. But really, right. didn't really get get too acclimated to really playing with rock bands till you know the guy from you know neil came into class one day and was like hey man i'm doing this thing with this band over here you know you're a pretty good drummer you want to come and check it out i'm like oh, sure why not you know check it out but that's where i met coburn and uh and all them and uh he was a, he was a pure rock star i remember when i met oh, jimmy yeah. i mean he had the hair he had all the the boots, the chains, you know, the, the leather gloves, look, the whole look, the leather, the fringe, <laughs> all of it, man. He was doing all of it, man. <laughs> you know, yes, he did. Yeah, but uh, when I got with with him, you know, he kind of pulled me and Craig off to the side. And he's like, oh, "Man, I don't know why you guys are wasting all this time doing originals. You know, we could do covers and you know get out there and play right now. You know." So he kind of put that in our head, and I think Craig ended up. I think Craig ended up moving many times that Craig Turner, you know, has come and gone, but right. uh, he, uh, he split for a little bit, I think to get it to go as a uh, over the road trucker for a little bit. And uh, me and Jim left, left that band. And we, we went to another band. Uh, we went to Hydra actually out of Knox. Um, we started playing with them for a while. And then after that, we played, we had another band called migraine, me and Jim. And uh, then after that, that's migraines would actually turned into poker face A's, you know, right on. Uh, you know, and we, we did that, uh, that original lineup of poker face was me, Craig, Jim, and, uh, Jerry Carter from Ohio. And, uh, you know, that was a good run. We had a good time with that. It was a pretty, pretty good band. I, I really, for the, the era, you know, is that post grunge, everybody was in the rock, you know, you, you went to the bars and you heard all this rock music and, you know, it was, it was aggressive and heavy and, you know, you could get away with playing stuff like break stuff and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and whatever metal. <laughs> wanted to play and people didn't side eye they're just like yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> it was a great great era for that band because those were the kind of guys we were you know what i mean and um we all got to showcase you know a lot of talent in those in those projects and um the good thing i loved about poker face that was like one of my first really serious original project where we decided we're gonna do both we're gonna do covers and we're gonna do originals and uh, we're gonna take it seriously enough to at least try you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so we did. And, you know, uh, I tell you, uh, a lot of people, you can say a lot about Jim, you know what I mean? As a cover musician, you'd be lazy about this or that at times, but as an original musician, when Jim wanted to really put his foot into it, put, put himself into something, he was really good, <laughs> really good. Um, and, and he really, uh, you know, with three of us, you know, musically and Jerry had a great voice, you know, it was a really formidable band. It was a fun band to play in. We, we I had a lot of good memories playing with those guys. Um, so now that Jim was Jim just a bass player at that point? Then at that when point, you first started, player and off singer. Now I played in bands with Jim. Was Jim was a rhythm guitar player, uh, right. rhythm guitar player, singer, uh, lead singer, bass player, singer. <laughs> uh, you know, there was bands that we played in together. Where he played some drums every now and then. And I'd go out and sing a little bit. You know, what I mean. Guy yep. was a multi talent for sure. He could do everything. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah for sure, and uh, and a lot of times, and like I said, God rest his soul, he had an ego to bring it all along oh. with him. So, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, there was something about that bravado that was just it was endearing because you know it was kind of he was kind of hilarious. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. You could you could look at his ego. His guy was just fucking hysterical. I mean, he was, yeah. He was he was funny. Oop, I probably wanted to watch my mouth. No, nope, you're fine. Don't okay. no worries. You you are fine. But. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, we had a lot of uh, I had a lot of good times and I had a lot of bad times with Jim. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. And uh, and uh, after after our stint together, uh, you know, he was pivotal in for Voodoo Rain to uh, you know you guys working with with us and Voodoo Rain and being able to take us out and pl and do a couple shows and and I, as a matter of fact, I think that was the first time I met you. We uh, 
we uh, tailed you all the way to Niles, I think, to the White House when we uh, we just did a, a few song opening with you guys up there one night. So oh, God, that takes you that, that'll take you back a few years. That was probably <laughs> that big, ugly white box truck that we had, we probably drove up there. I would imagine. <laughs> I I think this was like a Friday night, and we just followed you up in the car because I think you guys uh, were playing there all weekend. So uh, yeah, I do believe. <laughs> We could go in on like a Thursday night and set up a rig, you know, and you play all weekend and then you come tear it down on Sunday and, and they paid you decent. No, it was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't get – there's none of that no more, is there? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but, I mean, it's just – it's different. It's way different, yeah. you know. Do you feel uh, – speaking of different, do you feel uh, that, that the bands have actually kind of uh, – done that to themselves where where we kind of out tried to outbid each other for you know well let's let's take it you know we're both we're both kind of in this whole you know warsaw area uh you know with very few places to play and if you wanted to go play you had to travel and you know you wanted to play for your hometown and before you know it you were making you know six seven eight hundred dollars for the weekend but the next thing you know you're making the door for the weekend because the band before you said well we'll just play for the door and that became a do you feel that that was part of the thing that kind of happened in this local yeah. scene i think that it, you know like anything else economics sucks you know what i mean especially for bar owners and musicians and i get that you know i mean if a bar owner's, you know, starting to struggle a little bit and you're, you're not seeing as many, you know, hip hop was coming up and you, you saw a change in venue as far as what was popular music. Back when me and you were coming up, rock was king, man. You right. know, go in any bar and hear people play rock all night, you know. Well, that got to a point where a lot of people, you know, as they're coming up, they want to hear hip hop and top 40 and dance music. And the problem with that with all those rock guys where, you know, our, our crowds were getting smaller and smaller. So I said, the bar has got to justify what they're paying you, you right. know. I mean, by all means, you know, we were, you know, the big daddy's days we were making, you know, just tons of money and, and everything else. You know, we could justify, you could look out there and say, look at that crowd. We yep. need a lot of dollars and they're happy to pay it because they had the, those big, big draws. But, you know, when, when those kind of clubs went away and you're, you're left with some of the smaller places, you know, I know, I you know, they they can't handle that overhead. You know what I mean? It, to pay, yeah. pay and, you know, a thousand plus dollars a night. Um, you know, I think that, that some of some of that, um, it's just the scene in general. It's just just people as they change. You know what I mean. And we gotta adapt as bands. You know what I mean. We gotta we gotta make sure that we're putting on the best show we can put on. Um, a lot of times it's easy for us to mail it in. I always I, I hate it when you get the ones that do come go ahead and and I've been guilty of it. Don't get me wrong. You know there was stations in this band that's been around for eighteen years now that you know me and Brittany just decided yeah we're gonna play B rooms we're gonna play smaller rooms and you know we're gonna kind of mail it in. You know what I mean. You right. Know? Right. Yeah. But. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that I feel like I wish it could be better. You know, I, I think it still could be good. But I, if, if we're all going to – if we want to get there, we all have to network. It's got to be a community again, and that's the problem. It, it's not a community. It's so cutthroat. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's such a cesspool. I hate to say that. It's just so nasty, um, especially up north, you know, and I love all those people. And I, 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 and I, I make it a point of myself that I advertise everybody's stuff. I, I don't even care. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, I feel like you know what? If I'm gonna give back, I'm gonna give back to everybody. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna advertise your band when I see you put something out. I'm sharing it on Facebook. I'm doing whatever I can to help. You know what I mean? And try to bolster that. Um, but you'd be really surprised, even you know bands that you know you think are tight. You know, they they'll <laughs> stick as, yeah. as fast as they can. You know what I mean? So I, I get it. It's it's a it's a cutthroat industry, and you, know, you got a lot of sharks in a mud puddle. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and they, they <laughs> with each other. You know what I mean? Uh, but I do think that if we could do so much better as a community, if we all just, you know, came together and tried a little harder, if we want that scene to be where it was back in the old rock days, we all got to get those crowds out. And the only way you do that is, you know, old school, you know, uh, uh, barn building. You know what I mean? You just yeah. got to the old barn race and you got to bring everybody, you know, you got to stay up with your friends. It's tough for me. I've lost a lot of friends over the years, just right. things. And my circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I find it harder and harder and harder to draw. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, you know, we try to we try to stay up with the times, do new music, do what we can to be relevant. You know, just try to do our best, you know? Right. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, 
you you talk about that. I know that when we were doing the guilt for stuff, where we played a lot in South Bend at Cheers, you know, that was kind of our go-to being an all original band. Uh, we met and that community was, I thought was coming back together. You, yep. you've seen it a lot with, uh, bands like, uh, Sonic Ash and Soko Promo and, and, and those guys like that, where, you know, they were a tight knit group and they were, would welcome us with opening, open arms. And, and I thought we were getting back to that. Now for me, I'm, I've fallen out of the scene so hard that, uh, I'm, you know, I'm totally out of whack, but you know, uh, you know, I still try to keep up with everybody and just see what's going on. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I hope it gets back to that. I mean, you know, it, it needs could. to get back to that. It could, there's a lot of bands coming down from Michigan too, especially the original stuff. Um, <clears throat> most of the original bands are coming down from Michigan, you know, right on doing a lot of sound at cheers. And we're seeing a lot, a lot of bands coming down from Michigan um, <clears throat> and quality bands too. They're really good. They got good stuff. Um, nice. You know, so you see a lot of that. Uh, me and Miles have been and they're doing a lot of sound and lights here lately, you know, on, uh, uh, for those guys. And uh, we've got the, you know, been blessed to play some really good shows and you get to see some really good acts. Um, but again, that's one of those things that, that even that like cheers to start, he's starting to actually book uh, cover bands in there again. Um, All right. I'm starting to put, he, he gutted the whole place. So they got a new owner. Uh, he went in there, you know, sunk some cash into it because uh, it really needed a it really needed a good clean. <laughs> it was a yeah, it, did. it was a simple, it was pretty bad. Um, but he did a whole bunch of paint and a whole. Well, he owns a construction company, so he did a whole bunch of construction oh. up in there and uh, new bathrooms, the whole nine yards. Everything looks you know looks great. LED lights everywhere, and you nice. know, really put the money into it and uh, in for, inside and outside, like really, really sunk it into it. Um, and I think that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to make it a happening place again. And, and there's a shortage of venues in South Bend, so they really could use Cheers to come back to life. Um, it, it would really be great for the scene. I think it, it would be a, a good venue that, that has a house PA in it that, you know, and a great light show now that, you, you know, you could really get – have some really good shows in there. And, you know, it, and uh, it's a, again, it's another stop for all the venues. Um, right. We lost a few here lately. We lost, what, JT's last year as a music venue for bands. We lost Smokestack as a great music venue for bands. I mean, you know, that was a, an awesome place to go and see a band. Um, so as they, they diminish, well, there's still, there's more bands and more bands and fewer and fewer dates. So um, right. to see somebody that wants to kind of get, get, get another venue in there. I'm all for that. You know, I think that's great. <laughs> yeah. Know? No kidding. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about some of the places that, uh, okay. So we did poker, we did poker face ace. Uh, now when, I, I, I'm trying to think. I, I, I'm my brain is spinning here. Uh, after Poker Face, do what? I said I quit for a minute after Poker Face. <laughs> Did you? You took a little yeah. bit of time off. I took a year off. Yep. Yeah. Wait. Yep. I, I was uh, my my uh, my drums actually didn't come out of the bags. They sat in the corner of Craig Turner's garage for over a year. All my stuff. I didn't, <laughs> You know, I got done with Poker Face, and I was like, "I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this behind me for a minute," because that that band was a blur, man. I mean, we we went, it was it was the whole cliche, you know, whole, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that had to do with the rock and roll. It was all of it, you know. That's right. Just yeah, I need a break. You know what I mean? And I took a good uh, some good time off, and then I said, "Well, when I came back to playing, I was gonna do some low key stuff." You know what I mean? Um, so I got with, uh, you know, Don Donnie Rocker. From up there in uh, South Bend, mm, I'm, I don't think I do. Well, he uh, had his own original project called Citizen Bob, right? And uh, it was all stuff he wrote, you know what I mean? And and it was just, but really tongue in cheek, kind of funny stuff, you know what I mean? Right on. Uh, you know, he had a song called Barking Spiders about farts, you know what I mean? But <laughs> just all kind of funny, funny, funny shit. And it was hilarious to play because the guy was a, is a real character, you know what I mean? Uh, he plays uh -huh. a country band right now. He's playing guitar for for. Uh, I think Dixie Way South or something. Dixie South. I'd have to look it up. But uh, yeah, we, we started. I started playing with Donnie. You know, he he hit me up. You know, was, he had a, a little ad out there. He's looking for a drummer. You know, to play Citizen Bob stuff, and he wanted to do some shows. And I said, Yeah, sure, I'll check it out. You know what I mean? So um, I got with him. I think. Well, before that, I was playing with another band called Shaken Not Stirred. It didn't get off the ground. Uh, we put in about six months in a basement to go nowhere. Uh, right on. 
and which sucked. But I met the bass player from Citizen Bob in that band. That's right. Uh, another one, Julie C- Quinlan, God rest her soul, the queen of rock and roll. Right but on. Julie was an awesome bass player. And um, she brought me over. She was the one who turned me on to Donnie and, and, and Citizen Bob. So I start playing as Citizen Bob. And it was kind of incestuous up there at that time. Everybody's playing with everybody, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he was playing another band called Scarlet Nocturne with this redheaded lead singer. <laughs> 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 That I thought was smoking hot, you know. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, uh, I remember the first time I ever saw Brittany playing with Scarlet Nocturne. We were playing right after them in Citizen Bob, and I, I looked at Donnie. And I said, "Oh yes, she will be mine." <laughs> <laughs> And the rest <laughs> is history there, oh, isn't it? She hated me. I ain't gonna lie. We got in a band together. Uh, when she started playing with Citizen Bob, we made it kind of a cover thing, quasi cover original thing. Uh, she couldn't stand me, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I was I was all Josh back then, you know, the the the, the wife beater, you know, the, the chin strap, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep, yep, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> you know, it was a complete <laughs> you know, but uh yeah, you know, it was one of those things that that's the band we, we actually met in. Uh, uh, and then the the first, we played together probably in that band for a year. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, right. she had her dude and I was doing my thing. And, you know, we're playing, playing, playing. You know, she couldn't stand me. You know what I mean? And then one day uh, uh, we were playing at Cheers of all places. And uh, see, everything goes back to Cheers. Everything goes back to Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Uh, we were playing at Cheers, you know, one, one day with that band and, uh, I'm sitting there watching, you know, Notre Dame, you know, and late, later she tells me that she was only trying to siphon a drink off me. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> she didn't really want to know what I was all about. She was just trying to siphon a, a freaking rubber Coke off me, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, so she comes and starts talking to me and I'm like, yeah, what are you having? You know what I mean? And watching Notre Dame, she's like, oh, you like Notre Dame? I was like, yeah, fuck you. I'm an Irish fan. You know what I mean? And yeah, you know it. about the Irish and then. You know, she's like, you know, I'm a Cubs fan too. I'm like, well, fuck yeah, I'm a Cubs fan. You know, <laughs> and we talking about the Cubs you know, and everything else. It we just started hitting it off. You know what I mean? Like, you can right. see the conversation just started. Oh, oh, well, well, I didn't know that about you. You know, and you know, next thing you know, we kind of, kind of hit it off, and like the the gears started kind of turning there. That's where it's where it all started for me and her. You know, but uh, you know, yeah, I, I don't think we ever intended on you know, being together and everybody asks all the time, how do you, how do you guys make it work? You know, being together and being in a band, you know what I mean? And, you know, part of that is just, you know, the, the music's more important to us, believe it or not. You know what I mean? We give, we get some hairy fights about the fucking music, you know, <laughs> fight, about, you know about the music or this and that. And, and that's, you know, we'll be sitting there arguing about they're looking at us like, oh, my God. And we're like, ah, oh, this is how it is. You know, we just, you know, hash it out, figure it out, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, she gets it. She gets it. You know, most people, you know, you get girls that are out there. They don't get musicians. You know, right. they, get, they, they love you because they see you on stage and they want, it, they want they want that. But then as soon as they get you, like, you got to get off that stage, brother. You know yeah. what I mean? There's too many girls looking at you. You can't have that, you know. And, yeah. Uh, you know. It's what makes us who we are, you know. So, it, well, I I'll tell you what, man. The best years were when I was playing playing in the band with my wife. I mean, it, you you got that uh, you you got that uh, connection musically plus at home, and yeah, they get it when they're on stage with you. They understand. Yep. And they get away from that whole jealousy thing, yep. and which was always a problem in the past. With you know, always. and I've seen it a hundred times with musicians. You know, you said it. They get the they get the guitar player, but now they want to take the guitar player off the stage, and yep. it just doesn't work that way. You, you know, you're going to go home with more resentment than than anything else. So you you hope that they would understand that. But I think for me, and I, and I can tell for you, once you're on stage together, there's that there's that camaraderie and that understanding and all that good stuff that go with it. So I, yeah, I, I know exactly how you make sure. it work. I love that vibe. You know, we love that. Yeah. Feeling. You know, when you get up there and it, you, you get it as a musician, what, you know, why do we do it? Well, cause we're all slightly narcissistic and that's the way <laughs> we, we get our, our Yeah, That's what we like. We like that. We like that feeling, you know I mean? Um, you know, you know, she gets nervous every time, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm one of those people that flips the switch. It's just, it's a weird dynamic, but you know what right. I mean? Um, 
to me, it doesn't matter what the crowd size is. I, I love to play so much. It's like salivating. It's like there's this big juicy steak in front of me, you know? <laughs> uh, it's never going to tell, but as soon as she gets out there, it's like go time. You know, she, yeah. she flitched too, you know? So um, it's it's really, you know, it's it, it, and, and to be able to do that, like I've never had to come home and ever had anybody tell me, would you quit playing those damn drums? Never, <laughs> never happened. It's never happened, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> you've been together damn near twenty years. Never happened. <laughs> Never happened. Yeah, she wants to. She wants to crank up the mic and find a guitar player to come over so she can jam too, right? Now, does she? Does she play? Not really. Uh, not a whole lot. You know, she's more. You know, in, um, she plays a little bit of keyboard and you know, right on. You know, plunk around here and there, but you know, mostly. Um, the, her thing's really the vocals. Like, like you know, she went to took a lot of courses. She was. Uh, she did Firefly and she did all that uh, trauma stuff in high school, a lot of vocal, 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 vocal stuff. She went to, to uh, Indiana, Indiana State, Terre Haute for vocal oh, yeah. uh, for a little bit. Um, so that's, that was kind of always her thing too. I mean, like me, I was out of, out of high school. I was a music major too. Um, I went to, uh, I went to Ann Silla and figured out in, in theory 101 and 102 that, that, you know, it's really tough for drummers to learn mode scales and chords and shit. You don't, you don't deal right. with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was tough. It was, that was like algebra for me. Um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, so that's why I changed majors to business. <laughs> there you see, there you go. There you have it. So, uh, so you guys, uh, in citizen Bob, uh, and then it's kind of like that this kind of faded out. You guys decided to get out of that and, and groupies wanted then happened or another Craig Turner story. How about that? Uh, so, uh, you know, this is hilarious. I was just telling somebody about this the other day. Uh, so <laughs> really we, we, you know, finally citizen Bob was kind of winding down. Don wasn't wanting to do it as much, you know, this and that. And we were, we wanted to play. So we were like, well, we got to start our own gig now. You know, we got to find some players and, you know, it just so happens Craig Turner was li living on my couch at the time, you know, so, <laughs> imagine that and, and two, there's Turner on the couch right over there, you know <laughs> Uh, you know, and I had a no Craig Turner clause in my contract already by this point in time. I was just like, nah, nah dude, we get it going. You leave every time. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, so, you know, cause he's a nomad. He's very much a nomad, but, uh, we, we, we sat there and, uh, you know, I was jamming with Matt, you know, in some bands, uh, gears, um, right. he, him, he, you know, was the end of poker face, me and him were playing stuff. We were still really good friends at the time. And, uh, you know, he decided, you know, I was like, well, you want to do something? He's like, oh, fuck yeah, man. You know, so I had gears and I'm looking around for bass players, looking around for bass players. And Craig's just sitting there, just pouting day after day. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. I'll even play some bass. I'll split time with Matt. I swear. You know. So, you know, we ended up, you know, Matt said, fuck it. I'll be happy to play bass. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, that was Groupies 1's initial lineup, believe it or not, was Matt Gears, Craig Turner, me, and Brittany. Wow. Yeah. I mean, didn't do too many gigs with it like that, but, I mean, it was a pretty good lineup. We did we did some pretty cool stuff, you know. Uh, you know, again, some of the rock was more prevalent. We would do a lot more right. you know, Hailstorm and, you know, stuff like that. We were doing heavier material back then. Uh, but then Craig split again, you know, better out there. Green, grass was greener, grand for Mr. Turner. You know, he actually moved up uh, to South Bend area to teach guitar and stuff. And right on. That's how in in incestuous it is, though. He got up there and started uh, working at El Vegas for my yeah. guitar player now, Jamie Warren. You know what I mean? Oh, right on. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So. We, uh, when Golden Image Radio was going on, uh, Josh Toro. Uh, we had a quote unquote sponsorship from, uh, El Vegas. No, so, yeah. uh, we basically ran ads and, and I think that we had, uh, you could get like a 5% discount if you mentioned that you heard it on golden image radio or something like that. I don't know that that ever happened, but yeah. you know, <laughs> but it was still fun. We had a good time, but I think I was in there one time, no one kidding. time just to go check it out. And we, you know, being so far away, we had Wagner's. Oh yeah, you know if we needed anything, that's where we went to, or even uh, 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 mountain music, you know. Yeah, yeah, Miss Bill. Bill was awesome, man. That was he was one of our, our that was one of our guys, man. Like me and Matt would go in there because Matt taught out of there for years and years, and you yeah, know, uh, me and Matt would go in, and you know you could just bullshit with Bill, and Bill was just fucking hilarious. But you know, I you, I got a lot of sage wisdom from Bill Wagner about many topics, man, many topics. 
Uh, so yeah, it definitely devastating to lose that dude. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. You know, it, 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 we had Matt in in in, the, in groupies for a long time. You know, and and he had his ups and downs with different things. And you know, yeah, it was just one of those things that you know we you know it, it went where it went. You know what I mean? And you know, at, at that point, that's kind of when we started playing the smaller places, and we weren't so concerned with trying to you know be on top or be anybody. Just we just did it to do it. You know, something to do. You know. We could still oh, yeah. go three times a month and say we were playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, we ended up with uh, <clears throat> with Jamie and Robert. I ended up with Robert first. I got to a point. This is funny because you know all these people. We, we I think everybody in in, in middle Indiana's played with groupies wanted at some point. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, mean it, I don't know, man. I don't have that placard yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that placard is not hung crazy. from my from my neck yet. So <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. Uh, how many people have played in this band? Um, but uh, we ended up there for a little bit. Um, it was Matt, and it was it was uh, it was uh, um, oh shit, Chris Sarna, um, another one who passed away. Uh, yep, uh, Chris was in in the band for quite some time too. Um, then we had what we do. Then we started just using whoever because you know we were we were technically bassless and guitarless at the time. And we were still getting calls for dates. So, right. And we still wanted to play. So we were just grabbing pros. <laughs> I just grabbed a guy over here and a guy over here. And, you know, we get together once or, or we just do it there. There was a couple guys like uh, KJ Hammerstein. I fucking love, right? <laughs> KJ from South Bend. Dude, you just, you could just send it to him. And he just shows up and it's, it's, perfect <laughs> nice nice perfect. <laughs> that is a that is a pro right there pro. uh you know so we we start you know using some some this guy here this guy there um we had uh todd plesco from uh from fort wayne was playing with us a lot uh he had a big boy job though i mean uh he, he was a guy that was on a plane flying around the country all the time you know so oh, wow it, it, it limited his gigs, you know, and we would, but we had Todd on guitar for a while. Uh, and then we ended up uh, meeting, I ended up meeting Joe Bishop uh, doing a last minute sound gig for, for the autumn lead band. Uh, and he was playing bass and I met Joe and me and him hit it off as friends. And uh, we used Joe for a long time too. Uh, right on. Artie, Scott, Scotty Rocker played with us for a while. Uh, Scott Colbert played for with us for a while. Uh, Seth uh, uh, Seth played with us for a while. Uh, you know, from over here, you know, in, 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 until he went out to to L.A. But uh, you know, yeah, we've had a lot, a lot of different players in this band. A lot of different I'm trying players. to think of. The, I'm trying to think of the one kid that played with you. He, I think he bounced around both. He might have played bass and then uh, maybe a little guitar. I don't remember. But <laughs> Jeremy Yost, man, <laughs> what, what what was it again? Jeremy Yost. There, Yost, ah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't, uh, man. He's a natural. He's, he's, oh, man. He's, what he's doing? He's a natural, though. He's really good. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he yeah. called me, he called me a few years ago about something. He's like, oh, man, I want to, I'm doing this, and yeah, uh, come over here and jam. And I was like, let me know. And then I have not heard from him since. So. <laughs> he comes by once in a great while. We'll see Jeremy, you know what I mean? Call him Jerberry. He fucking hates that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but uh he, you know. he he grew up around us uh because yeah. he's my kid's age well you know even well a little bit older than miles but yeah. uh uh we used to call him snickers yeah yeah yep that's what everybody used to call him snickers yeah. i started calling him jer bear because I, I i went you know i i i dropped him off at home one time and he's like oh come on in we'll run in real quick you know and as soon as he walks in the door, his mom's like, is that my little chair bear? It's like, oh, chair bear. And he's just like, fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> mom. <laughs> mom. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Oh, yeah. So we talked about, uh, we talked about uh, you know, uh, kind of the whole process of, of, of all the different bands and stuff and, and, and kind of where you're at today. But you have a very talented son. Oh, he's crazy. Yeah. And uh, so you guys, you said something about you now have a sound, uh, a sound company on the side with, with Miles. Yeah. We, I've been, I've always done it. You know what I mean? You know, you know, yeah. how, Jeremy, when you got a PA sitting there that you paid all that money for, you're like, if I could make a couple of bucks, run a couple of shows. Hey, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> it helps make you feel a little bit better about all the cash. 
about it. No, but uh, yeah. I've always had gear. I've always I've always had PAs. And I've always ran them. I mean, I'm I'm far away from the long the days of the box trucks and all the all that shit. You know, trusses and yep. you know massive PAs. But um, still, we got a pretty pretty formidable one. Still, we could we could do some pretty good shows. Um, and you know, he's he's always been around it, man. He's been around music his whole life. Yeah. Uh, so you know, when he uh, when he ended up getting uh, out of school. He graduated. He graduated, you know, with the Chopin uh, uh, Award there, and you know, he he had a couple uh, good, you know, solo and ensemble first in in state, you know, playing snare, and uh, you know, really really sunk his, himself into it. Ended up going to IP IPFW, and then COVID happened, you know. And no. It, yeah. Just boo. Yeah, it <laughs> ruined the whole fucking thing. And I mean, because all the scholarship money went to shit, and just. You know, so it, it just, he's had a hard time kind of getting back into the swing of it. Uh, but at the same time, he's like, man, you know, I just want to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, well, you know, so he's been doing a lot of streaming and stuff, but he's been getting a lot of like, uh, like Pro Tools work off of it, you know, because he, he, you know, we do a little recording here and there and we got right on. Pro Tools set up and all that. So, um, you know, he's gotten really good at, you know, editing and things like that so some of the streaming friends they send him stuff he edits them they, they send him a few bucks for here and there do stuff like that so he's doing that on the side and he's really into that right now he's writing his own stuff uh, which you know he's got a lot of material he just has to sit down and record it and it's like Did right focus <laughs> but <laughs> i was the same way so I, i'm like yep. i understand where he's at he's all over the place and when i was 18 i was no different you know what i mean so, right yeah you know um one of those things though he loves music he loves it you know what i mean and uh you know right now him and britney do an acoustic thing uh, yep. here and there they haven't booked a whole lot of shows this year uh, they're gonna retool their stuff he got piled into a lot of stuff with me running sound and um uh, we started doing a lot of shows for cheers up there and uh they're loading our schedule up with dates and then we've got other sound company dates for the pa and everything else so uh, we're just busy, you know, just really, really busy doing, doing between that. And the, when, when we're playing, he runs around and does camera work for us too and gets video and stuff. So he's out and about, you know, he's, he's getting into the scene. Uh, I told him, he's got, you got to find a band, man. You got to find a band, <laughs> you know, out there. Right. Right. I drag him up every now and then when I see him, you know, you know, he's in there and I'm like, Oh, we haven't done sweet child yet. Let's make him play that. You there know? you go. And, you know, he just hates it because, you know, he doesn't play drums ever. You know what I mean? He's always <laughs> playing guitar. He did yep. that through high school. I swear, when he got to high school, before high school, I bought that kid a drum set when he was seven years old. And don't you know it sat in the corner of the room till he was about 13? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? He had video games, man. He ain't got no time for drums. <laughs> uh, you know, and all this other stuff, you know, like guitars, guitars, guitars. He went straight into guitars. Uh, he had lessons from Gears, lessons from, well, lessons from Craig first. Uh, right. Craig gave him two years of lessons, and Gears gave him about three years of lessons. Um, you know, and you'd think the kid would come out of just a metal head that's just dude. <laughs> and no, he's more of this crazy acoustic player that sevenths and ninths and crazy modes and just, right. you know, and just some of the stuff he writes, you're just like, whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, whoa. You were in it. It's all up here, and it's like, man, yeah. cerebral as hell. But he's way better at theory than I ever will be, um, you know. But uh, it, it's, yeah, he could do a lot. He's just got to focus, man. You know, he's got to focus. He'll get there. He, he's he still he's still young and yeah. and kind of enjoying that uh, that uh, early early twenties right now. So yeah, man, get out there and just love the shit out of it, and hopefully. Right. Uh, but yeah, he's extremely talented. I know that the last time I actually talked to him. Uh, of course, we ran into you at Bar 13 when they were playing on that Wednesday night. Right. And uh, uh, then again, uh, he would did um, uh, a, he played guitar for a wedding uh, for yeah. his uh, for his stepsister, and and you know just sitting there watching him play while you know everybody was kind of walking around doing their stuff. It was like, man, he's just he just it's leaps and bounds. You know, it was like I remember watching him play early on, and then. And then seeing him play at that, and I was like, "Yeah, he, yeah." There's no no doubt that yeah. the kid's talented. So, yeah, it, it's but it's different. I think he approaches it really, really a different way, which is kind of it's kind of refreshing. You know, I mean, I yeah, you know, we were all about 
the four chords yeah. banging. Yeah, yeah, give me give me power chords and 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 no. fucking it goes to fucking eleven. <laughs> yeah. Turn it up and just bang your head, you know. No, yep. I had air back then, you know what I mean? Just, God, you know, yeah. just let it let it rip, you know. And I mean, <laughs> he, he just has such a different approach to it. He, his approach to it's more more like a composer, you know what I mean? It's right. More like he's trying to you know layer layer parts on top of them and just blend it all. It's just. He's got some <laughs> stuff in his head, but you know, it's totally yeah. I love working with him. You know what I mean? Because uh, I get to play all the drum stuff. You know what I mean? You know, like right. You know, he's totally capable of playing the drums on it. But you know, his dad's a pro drummer, and he, you know, I guess he likes my flavor a little bit. So you know, <laughs> he's always like, you know, hey man, you know, you want to drop something to this, and I'm like, yeah, we can do something. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, so not only are you a seasoned musician who've been playing for a few years. Uh, you did say you went on, got your business degree and, uh, you are, are, are you, are you branch manager or wh yeah. what? Break it down for me a little bit. I'm a branch manager for chase right now. Nice. I'm I, I actually just started this job though. Cause I, I was, I was with uh wood forest national bank for 14 years. Yeah. 14 years. Um, and then I, you know, I got hit up by this, uh, this, uh, you know, market director, you know, he was just like, you know, Hey man, you know, I think you got more left in the tank, man, you know, <laughs> you, know I was, you know, it kind of perked my interest and, you know, it, you know, I, I was ready to, for a new challenge, you know, I was really kind of right. getting into a place with, with, with Wood Forest where I kind of topped out and I was just kind of bored, you know, it was kind of, you know, going to work, it was a drag, even though I loved my team and, you know, everything else, it just, it was a real drag, you know, the organization became a drag, you know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, whereas, you know, Chase, the organization's insanely humongous and there's so many resources and, you know, it, it's just so vast, you know what I mean? There's so many different things you can do and right. you know, it's, 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 uh, definitely, definitely a crazy step up, but, uh, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot too. So you got, got a lot to learn, you know, <laughs> you, know you, knew right. a lot and you don't know so much. You know, uh, you know yeah. I mean? so, you think, you know, but do you do, know, do you really know? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, for me, but you know, yeah, you know, blessed. It's, 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 you know, it's been worth it for sure. Good deal. Good deal. I'm happy to hear that. So you got the whole musician family. You got the, the top notch, uh, got the top notch job that you're, you're going to have to relearn. And right. <laughs> what more could you ask for? Hey, answer me this. I, uh, since you started playing drums, how has your kit evolved? Oh, that's a big one, man. Um, so I'll start you off from the the original kit. The Let's original, go original, right? The original five piece percussion plus buff <laughs> from Parasite Music and War. Oh, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> yeah, but I knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yep. That was the original one, and then it kind of turned into a Frankenstein of things, you know. Um, my dad, somebody on the base had a kit. They were looking to get rid of cheap. It was like a Thor. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and, and, and then they, I mixed the two kits to, you know, to have a bigger kit of crap. You know what I mean? Um, it was all just rough junk. You know what I mean? At first it was just, you know, cause you know, when you're starting out like that, you know, drums are expensive, man. You know oh yeah. I mean? Yeah. You know, my parents didn't have that kind of money. You know what I mean? So, yep. You know, it was an expensive hobby for me, and but at the same time, I think they knew that it was a it was a good release for me. You know what I mean? It was a positive yeah. for me. You know what I mean? I was an ADHD kid. I was hyper. You know what I mean? Really annoying. You know, I needed I needed something to to take some 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 stuff off on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so you know, I think the first decent kid I got, <clears throat> I bought from a friend of mine. Um, his parents were, uh, his dad was a doctor and, uh, he had a one Christmas, he bought him a brand new, uh, Pearl export kit, you know, two up, one down, uh, five piece, you know, all Chrome, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, so the good thing about that is no matter how dinged up, you really couldn't tell in the lights. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it just looked great. So, you know, he, he Got it for Christmas one year. I think he played it for a month or two, and then he never messed with it again, you know? Oh, my. And I would go over there all the time with them, and every time I'd see that kid, I'd go over and beat the hell out of it, you know what I mean? And, and you know, and everything else. And 
And his mom goes, you know, you love that kid way more than he does. She goes, she goes, he ain't never going to play it. She goes, you care if I sell that to him? You know, <laughs> to me, and then my, my buddy was like, no, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? I <laughs> play it, you know, he goes, well, if I get the cash, whatever, you know? So I'm like, whatever. And I was like, well, you know, I'm a broke ass kid, you know, and I, I, I have a, you know, I, I drive papers around, you know, to be delivered. That's my job. You know, I don't make a whole lot of money, but right. can I give you a hundred bucks for a, a month for, you know, next four months or so, you know, that, would that cover it? You know, so I got that kid for 400 bucks, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> <clears throat> and I played that kit forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kit ended up turning into a rack and then that yep. rack had symbols <laughs> and then it, was, it was a bigger kit it was only a five piece but it was a bigger it had a bunch of symbols you know what i mean right um and then i started playing with uh who was that playing actually before that i had that kit but i was playing with hydra and the, and the bass player had an 11 piece ludwig oh it, it was a monstrous kit right yeah. double bass yeah. just wrapped all the way around you you know what i mean and hydra was a big glam band you know what i mean so I was playing that monster for a while, but, but I remember the laziness in me, you know, it started out as 11 piece kit with all this shit, you know what I mean? And then yep. it ended up being more like a, you know, seven or eight piece kit with some <laughs> shit. And then a bass pedal <laughs> left and a double bass pedal came in there and then it was more like a six piece. <laughs> you uh-huh. know I mean? And, and yep. you know, uh, I just got tired of dragging it. Just too much shit. You know what I mean? Just too much, too much, too much. And it's a lot of the rooms like you, You'd set that stupid thing up, and there's no room oh, yeah. after that, you know. So it was dumb, you know. Yeah. But I went through that, went to the five piece, played the pearls for a long time, um, and then I said, I, I I finally got a decent job, and I'd saved some money, and I had decent credit, and I got a guitar center card, you know what I mean? And I was just like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting something cool, you know. <laughs> I think that every time I go to Sweetwater. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I, so I go in. No, it wasn't Guitar Center. I take that back. It was Woodwind and Brasswind. One of my. Oh albums, yeah. Woodwind and Brasswind, and uh, I, I go in there, and they had this uh, this DW Fusion kit sitting there. It was, it was an Oyster White wrap. You know what I mean? And it yep. was a uh, two up, one down, uh, a 10, 12, 14 Maple DW Wood Shop. Now Wood Shop isn't a collector's. It's right. what turned into PDP eventually, right? Right. Yeah. But I will tell you that the, when there was DW before it turned to PVP, the craftsmanship was—I mean, it was—it yeah. was nice, man. That's that's the nice. That's like the best sounding kit I still have. You know what I mean? And I'm missing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm losing, lost two times of it. Uh, got <laughs> pulling out of the back of my truck, fuckers. Oh, no. Gotta hate. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> you know. So I had that thing. I, I played that kit in Poker Face forever, and I paid that 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 DW. Um, I, when I was playing, I, I played with Don Music and Mike Music out there, and and out there and Throwdown Incorporated with Jared Beer and those guys. I was playing metal, and I was playing that kit. Uh, right. You know, with Fusion Kit playing metal. Come on, you know what I mean? What are you doing? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But uh, you know. That one I ended up after, you know, I, I, I lost two times out of it. You know, like I said, I got, got yanked. I bought another DW because I love the DW so much. I went and got a collector's because it was, you know, on sale. And right. it was, came in as a used trade. And that's where I got that Black Swirl one. I got a hell of a deal on that. Um, and then that one, uh, you know, I started outfitting it with much nicer symbols and, you know, you know stuff like that. But I've also got a, 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 a Gretsch. That's uh, 18 inch kick, you know. That one's mahogany. That one's got a whole different sound than than the yeah. other two. The maples are loud as shit. They really are. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I you know, I've gotten smaller and smaller and smaller, man. Uh, the 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 that I still play that white DW. It's a three piece, but I use it as a hybrid now uh, with with a rolling setup. So I got a double shot rolling up there, like a like an up tom, but it's actually two times. It's the, the rims of tom and the middles of tom. So then, then on the floor, I got regular 14 inch floor tom, and then over here I've got another double shot, where I've got a floor tom and I've got an 808, so I can get a boom out of it. Yeah, yeah, you you want that boom? Yeah, you want that nice 808 for sure. Well, the floor tom's got a bunch of boom in it. It's actually got a because on the the SPDXX you can mix tones and stuff, so it's actually got a floor tom with a kick drum underneath it for the thump on it. 
So nice. if you hit it, I, I scared the shit out of the sound guy with it all the time. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, it could be like, duh, duh. It could be that deep, but it is. It sounds like you got like, like a 22 inch kick up there that you're hitting, you know, right. at the yeah. time. ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, I, I went hybrid and two up cymbals and a China and, you know, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I can pack it in my <laughs> trunk. <laughs> yeah, dude, put it anywhere. It's, just, it's so fast. Um, yeah. And then I got the nine shot pad over here too. You know what I right. mean? So, but uh, yeah, no, it, that's definitely changed, especially for when, when we got with Robert and Jamie and we started doing nothing but top 40 and, you know, we, we you know, we do anything from, you know, Whitney Houston to, you know, to, you know, uh, you know, I don't know any of these, these new bands, you know, they do dance monkey. We do all these, these, these pop songs. I don't even right. know. Them. Uh, we do some Miley Cyrus, you know, we do, we do all this stuff that, I would have never thought I would have been doing, you know. I know, right? Back when you were playing Poison and Rat and shit like that, yeah. you're like, you know, someday you'll be playing some Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I got into a band with uh, Bostel there for a little bit. Me and him were doing originals uh, there in a band called Spain. I was really proud of that effort. Uh, they couldn't get along, unfortunately, but uh, uh, I was really proud of the. Uh, it was a great collab. There's some really good music came out of it, but nobody will hear it because, you know. What we yeah, did have out there, they, they, you know, they, they decided to be dick bags about it and, you know, cry about it. Eh, well, I copyrighted for, oh, you wrote a riff, you dick. You didn't write a song. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I did see that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of post uh, Jamie uh, actually tags you in for some of the stuff. So I was going to ask you about that. Uh, that was just kind of a quick little <laughs> thing. It didn't didn't really last a, a long oh. time. We did it for we put two years in a basement you know what i mean oh uh, yeah. we wrote about 14 songs uh recorded uh two of them with bush with bush on um that were yeah. just came out fucking awesome you know what i mean uh then we decided we wanted to do it ourselves uh the, the guitar player had a home studio he's a little you know i don't want to shit anybody but he's a little bit of a novice at it you know what i mean um yeah. and it wasn't going as good you know and uh, that turned into, you know, creative differences with him and Bostel because Jamie's got, wants it to be what it's supposed to be, you know, right. Taking things that good, good, getting good recordings. And, and actually his production value has stepped up a ton. Uh, he started messing around with Reaper and, and when he got COVID, he literally sat in his house, couldn't do shit. And he wrote about 20, 30 fucking songs on his own, you know, with no band, just him. And, right. uh, that turned into the Bostel stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, right uh, on. But uh, he's still doing Praise the Fallen and Bostel. But, uh, you know, I met Jamie, you know, year, years ago, you know, and, and, you know, we always had a good relationship. Uh, he's got some haters, which is unfortunate. You know, some people that, you know, can't let stuff go from 12 years ago, which is sad. But, you know, right. uh, to try to cyber bully people about stuff that happened 12 years ago is, is pretty, pretty weak, man. But, you know, um, so I'm using this forum to get that out there. <laughs> Little weak as you, but uh, you know the thing is, uh, you know that guy's got a big passion for music, man. He loves music, and it might not always come out the right delivery, but you know the, the guy, right. the guy loves loves music, and that's all he's trying to do is is, is live his dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so me and him kind of really got. I liked a lot of his music. I, I thought he had some really good, really good skeletons to write stuff to that I could, you know, do what I do and orchestrate, play around with, and. You know, we've always written really well together, you know. So um, the Spain thing was cool while it lasted. Um, we tried some stuff after that. We just couldn't coordinate schedules, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he had a lot on his plate, and I had a lot on my plate. But uh, we tried to do thing, a thing with uh, Ackerman called Organ Donors, uh, a, a 90s cover band, and we just couldn't get it off the ground. <laughs> you know. <laughs> just, you know? But, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, I, I try to play with everybody. Try to, you know. I'm always available. People know that, you know, if you need a drummer and last minute, you're fucked. Send me the stuff. I'll do it. You know what I mean? Right on. I like to play. You know what I mean? I love to play. So, you know, I'm always about opportunities, you know? Oh yeah. You never know who you're going to meet when you're out doing that stuff. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have one last question for you. Sure. And, uh, this is, uh, this is a self-indulgent, uh, question for golden oh. image podcast. When you guys go out, what is your favorite restaurant to go to? Oh, man. Man, that's tough. 
because she's got favorites and I have favorites. <laughs> well, what is your favorite? Because you are with me now. <laughs> I think Brittany's favorite is Carabas. You know what I mean? Right on. Right uh, on. No, that's definitely her favorite. Man, I'll tell you, I'm a simple man of simple taste. <laughs> <laughs> And usually, you know, I, I would, I would it's, it's tough for me because I really can't say a restaurant because I get wings everywhere I go. So it, it, I always eat the wing plate and I, I judge your, your, your hot wings. That's what I do. I'm all about <laughs> hot wings <laughs> everywhere I go. Um, other than that, I'm a Southern guy from New Orleans that loves crawfish, shrimp and crabs and see good seafood. And yep. I don't seafood up here because it's not but trash you know what i mean yep no i know exactly what you mean i i've been down there i know the good stuff and then you yeah. get up here and you're like eh, okay yeah. it's so weak red lobster's weak man. oh yeah 100 percent. good stuff man good stuff <laughs> i'll tell you what man if you ever get a chance uh and maybe you've been there because you you know you're a, you are a, a guy that, that gets around have you ever been out to south haven South Haven. I've been up to Grand Haven, but not South Haven. I don't think. Go to go to South Haven. Uh, they have a, a place up there called Clementines. Okay. And uh, their their uh, Michigan perch is pretty fucking amazing. Okay. So if you, okay. It's uh, okay. yeah. Be prepared to wait. I'm just going to tell oh, you yeah. that because it's, there's always a wait. <laughs> there's always an hour and a half wait list. But uh, yeah, go check out their perch plate, man. It's just fucking delicious. So uh, definitely recommend that. But Josh, thank you so much for, for giving me this time, man. I so much appreciate it. It's so nice to actually sit and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one and yeah, and yeah. like I said, n not with having a ton of things going on around us when we see each other. And uh, I really just appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me, man. Uh, this has been really fun. Cool, cool. Well, let me do my plugs, and uh, and then we'll get on out of here. Okay. All right, we want to thank you guys for checking out uh, Golden Image Podcast and uh, and hanging out with me and Josh tonight is uh, or today or however you want to listen, whatever time of the day you're listening to this podcast. Uh, we appreciate it. If you have any uh, questions, comments, you know that I can pass on or, uh, or to Josh, or you have any questions for me, you can always email us at uh, Golden Image. No, wait, that is not right. It is Golden Mojo Ent at Gmail dot com. And if you like us and you might like the uh, other podcast in the Golden Mojo uh, Empire, you can check out The Call Guys on Mondays. Of course, Golden Image on Tuesdays. The United States of Paranormal on Wednesdays. We got the Indiana Chiefs fans. They're on hiatus, but they'll be back at the beginning of the season. Uh, of course, you got A Court of Books and Booze and Murd Nerds on Fridays. That is the Empire you never know what old Golden Jay might be uh, brewing up next, too. There might be a new one coming, so uh, maybe it's already out by now. You never know. But, yeah, nope. no loving the podcast. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> oh, what's uh, this plug? Uh, groupies won it this weekend, Saturday night, five-star dive bar, Elkhart, Indiana. Come on, hang out with us. Unfortunately, this poem will come out until sometime in May, but... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> i love the plug anyway you guys got a website yeah we do www.groupieswanted.net there you go everybody's doing it <laughs> everybody's doing it all right well we're getting out of here josh thank you so much man appreciate it all right man See you, all right later Golden image. Oh, I finally got a crap this game. Rock on.